you to Animaka for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mikey, and in today's video, we're diving into our backyard space and talking all things design, makeover, and cost breakdown. Back in 2021, me and my husband bought this house. It is a new construction build home, which in California, that basically means your outdoor spaces come as a blank slate. Ours literally came with just mulch and a few walking pads at the entrances of the home. The cons of that are obviously you need to take into consideration that you'll need a budget for that outside of the purchase price of the home. But the pros is you get to design your space the way you want it. And that was ultimately why we decided to go with a new construction home. Also, the sun is sunning, the wind is winding, and we have some planes over head so that's why I have my sunglasses on and I'm using this sort of obnoxious mic here but I'm hoping this helps muffle the sound so you can hear me a little bit more clear. So with that said the vision for the space was a modern minimal vibe with touches of a Mediterranean Spanish sort of inspiration. A lot of this inspo did come from a trip we took in Greece where we stayed in Santorini and we stayed in a town called Ia and we stayed in a traditional cave house. If you've ever seen these gorgeous picturesque photos of Greece and you see like towns with whitewashed walls beautiful blue roofs. Nine out of ten times I'm gonna say that's probably taken in this town and so we wanted a little piece of that into our backyard space. So we did hire a designer for this to help our vision come to life which I will talk about later in the video. We also hired a construction company to build everything out for us. So with that said this video is gonna be into three parts. The first part is gonna be back in 2021 when they were building this I started to film the process of it all. Just keep in mind though that I didn't have a YouTube channel back then but in the back of my mind I knew that I did want to start a channel and so I'm glad that I ended up taking clips. I just want to let you guys know that because it is newbie filming. <laughs> And then the second part of the video will be a tour of our backyard space. And then finally, the third part, we're going to head inside and talk about all things cost, advice, tips, and just overall thoughts of the whole process and how we felt about working with our designer as well as the construction company. So with that said, let's go ahead and roll the clips from 2021. All right, so we're in uh, day four. They've set up, or they're starting to set up the water irrigation. the beginning of week two for demo and prep. Land super rocky. So we were supposed to go about maybe four feet back, but because it's so rocky, we might just do three feet. Yeah, this is uh, the start of week two. This is the start of week three for our front and back uh, landscaping. We're extending our driveway here. And then along here, we're planning to do some citrus trees. And as you walk along, you get to the back area. So they're starting to do the form for the water feature, assuming it's a form. So there'll be a water feature here. And the retaining wall all across there. And then on that side, there's going to be the uh, outdoor chimney with a steel pergola structure. Yeah, it's crazy because it's uh, our land is super rocky. This is the middle of week three, and the guys are pouring in the concrete. So now we're in the middle of week four, and they're doing some footings for the concrete everywhere. They've also started their retaining wall. It's gonna be a smooth white stucco finish that connects to our water feature, which will have um, some cool Spanish tiles. And then over here, there's gonna be a little grassy area for the dogs. The retaining wall extends all the way to the black steel pergola they're building. It's gonna be powder coated in black. And then when you walk this way, we're gonna have some custom benches. And then right here, we're, we're having them set up um, the outdoor, I guess, barbecue kitchen area. But we're gonna phase that out and just put a grill here for now. But at least we'll have it set up when we're ready. So yeah, that's how it's going so far. A lot of prep work being done still. Very rocky terrain. So here we are. Uh, close to the end of week five. Just more updates on the footings for the cement pads and walkways. Still working on the retaining wall, fountain, and then um, this is the fireplace. All right, so I honestly don't know what week or day this is, but we are here. Tomorrow they're gonna pour the concrete in. We got a lot of work done on the retaining wall. Yeah, it's gonna be a big day tomorrow with the pour. How it's looking. All right, they're starting to pour concrete today. I'm too embarrassed to go outside. So I'm doing it from inside. Where? 
All right, guys, here's another update. Honestly, don't remember where we last went off again, but our market lights are up. Hey, monster. It's my Boston Terrier monster. Hi, babes. And then this is our Chihuahua. Her name is Hero. Hi, Hero. Hey. Hi, baby. They love coming out here already. Started adding this to the retaining wall. I'm not really sure what that is. I'm assuming it makes it easier to stucco. I guess it makes a cleaner stucco look. Look back here, there's all the pipings, some electrical. And then here you can kind of see the, the type of shade it provides. Actually it feels pretty good when you're standing here. I'm not sure if I pointed this out, but I love the way they did the drains. How they're kind of look like custom concrete drains. Super cool. Here's how the fireplace is looking. This is kind of how it looks coming from our master bedroom. So when this is open, we'll be able to hear um, the water coming down. All right, hey y'all. Been quite a while since my last update just because I feel like for about two to three weeks, a lot of the, I guess, background work was being done, kind of the behind the scenes stuff. So nothing was really changing. So here's kind of an update. I think it's a big one from my last one, but we got some olive trees in there. The, the turf is in, the plants up on the hill. This is probably only like 20% of the plants so far. So there's gonna be quite a few more. These come out of the nursery like a bush. So they're gonna prune it for us to get it into more tree shape. A little bit like, I don't know, It's it looks wet or dry in certain parts. So I gotta talk to them about that. They haven't white stuccoed the retaining wall yet or this, so this will be all white. So you got the cinder, cinder rock in there. And then an orange sort of fire brick. And then some of the pea gravel which they call chip seal is in. This is a 3 8 of an inch size and it's in um, a California gold color. Um, I got some boulders. This will be mulch going all the way down there on the sides for screening. And then just a huge side yard for, I'm not sure what we're gonna do. We're almost at the finish line. We ordered some lanterns, wet listed lanterns to go over here. I believe we got four of them. All right, hey guys. Uh, it's been a long time, but finally got the back finished. So here it is. Got our water feature going. Still gotta get some furniture here. I just wanted to give a quick tour. But this was actually a pain because the water was splashing everywhere. So for the time being, we put these strainers to kind of catch the splash up from coming back up. So we'll probably get someone to create some sort of screening for us. So it looks less ghetto than that. But I mean, it looks pretty good. But here's the rest. All right, now we're back to 2024 and I hope you guys enjoyed that footage from 2021. I really enjoyed looking back at it and I'm really glad that I ended up taking video clips during that process. And if you guys are going through similar things, I highly recommend taking video just for you. Even if you don't have a YouTube channel, it was really fun to go back to just see the overall process from when it was literally just gravel and rocks. It looked like Mars back here. And then to see the space today with all the landscape just flourishing, I don't know, it just kind of like takes you full circle and all of the heartache and money we spent and the loan we're still paying off for this outdoor space which we'll get into later in the video it all is worth it for us and so I hope you guys enjoyed that anyways this is part two of the video where we'll go into a tour of the backyard space I'm currently in what we like to call the gathering area or the dining area. The goal was the interior of the house behind you right now is an open space floor plan. So when you walk in the house, you're greeted into this kitchen followed by the dining and living room. So it's kind of all one room, but your eye automatically draws your attention back here. When you're in there, you see a really clear view of the back. It gives you that indoor outdoor vibe without actually being outdoors. So this space is anchored by this custom steel 
pergola, I think it's called. They called it a steel structure in the plans. This was custom made by the guys with the construction company we hired and they did a fantastic job. We knew we wanted steel to get a little bit of that industrial vibe in here to add to the whole modern minimal sort of inspiration we had. And it does provide, as you can see back here, a pretty decent amount of shade. We're waiting for these olive trees to mature and that will be what gives us the shade. This steel structure is also massive. It is 20 feet in length from here all the way to the other end. That's why there are eight steel columns versus four. The next thing I want to talk about in this space is the ground. And so to help with that indoor outdoor feel, we actually added concrete steps to take you from the living room out to here. So it does very much feel like a part of the house without being actually attached to it. So we really love that. We also went with a sand finished concrete that our designer recommended, which I really had no idea about prior to designing and building this backyard. But if you are looking into doing concrete in your exterior of your home, really think about a sand finished concrete. When using concrete, sometimes it could be an afterthought, but using the sand finish, I feel like it just makes it more intentional. It looks modern. You get all this texture on the ground, and then when the sun hits it at certain spots, especially during sunrise or sunset, all those little tiny pebbles of stone kind of just sparkle, and it just looks really good. Let's head to the back, which is another focal point of this gathering area. So as you can see over here, we have a really modern white stucco fireplace. This is gas burning. It's not wood burning. We really wanted a wood burning fire place but we live in an area that is prone to to fires over here too next to it we have it anchored with custom cantilevered bench seating so because there are custom seating right here it looks like one whole unit and so i think that really makes a difference we also went with white stucco to bring in a little bit of that santorini mediterranean vibes in and overall i just really love this fireplace back in the 2021 clips you might have saw that these seats were actually a polished concrete but after a while i was looking back here and I'm like something ain't right like like something is just not flowing and it was because it was a two-tone sort of moment right here and that just took away from the whole minimal vibe and definitely took away from that Mediterranean white stone vibe we were looking for. I ended up reaching out to our contractor, asked him for his white stucco guy, contacted him and got a quote to get this white stuccoed which I'm so glad we, we ended up going that way because now it just looks complete and I'm obsessed. All right so the next thing I want to talk about are these lanterns. They are from a company called Serena and Lily. I knew I wanted to bring elements in to warm up the space and that's going to be through use of lanterns like these in this brown wicker style and then also the dining table that we have here. So my goal was to incorporate accent pieces and planters and stuff like that. That is what was going to bring the color and warmth to our space. Again, these are from a company called Serena and Lily. I love these lights. I think they provide such a vibe at night. We got the fireplace going. You want it to feel nice and cozy back here. So these lanterns are perfect for that. All right. And finally, in this space, we have this huge massive dining table. It's an outdoor tiny table that we got from a company called Article. Unfortunately, I don't think they sell this anymore, but I will double check. And if they do, I'll leave it linked down below. We also chose bench style seatings. We wanted it to feel a little bit more relaxed. And I think the bench style seating adds to that. It gets people closer together. And so highly recommend a outdoor table with benches. It's been awesome. Oh, and I forgot about this solo stove down here. So we ended up placing this here because when we do have the fire going, there's obviously only so much room here where people can sit and gather and so we figured it would be nice to have a fire over here where other people can sit around we can put some chairs around here too also for doing s'mores this is a perfect way to do that here all right so with that said let's go ahead and make our way over to the left side of the backyard let's go come on oh i gotta get you <laughs> All right, as we entered the left side of the backyard space, right here originally was going to be a built-in barbecue. Again, in the third part of the video, I'll let you guys know why we decided against that. But with that said, we did want a space for a barbecue, so we kind of emulated the steps over from the main house over here, but just in a smaller form. That way, this has its own intentional space for grilling. Like, you literally got to walk over here and do your grilling business. With that said, I am looking to replace this with a flat top. So Weber, I know you guys just released your Slate flat top grill. If you guys are for some reason watching this and want to sponsor a video, I would love your flat top. <laughs> But we do love this grill and honestly we just realized that we're more flat top cookers versus grillers so that's why we want to invest in a flat top which 
Spoiler alert was a big reason why we ended up going with a non-built-in because we weren't sure about the surface that we wanted to use for our grill. We do have this beautiful olive tree back here and this is one of three olive trees. We have one in each corner and then one in the middle. This one here as well as the one in the middle, they're the two olive trees that when they mature, they're going to provide the shade that we need for the gathering area. As you saw from the beginning, these were so small and just in a matter of three to four years, they've grown this big already. So we're hoping in like the next two years, hopefully these mature a little bit more so that they can give us the shade that we need. And then underneath the olive tree, we just have these boulders that we have throughout the backyard space. We also have some agave because we knew we wanted everything to be drought tolerant with a few exceptions, but most of the plants here are drought tolerant. We also have a terracotta plant over there with a euphorbia, again, bringing in that color through potted plants and accessories. We still have a little bit to do with that, but I'm taking my time because I don't want to just buy something just to add color. It really has to speak to me and it really just needs to blend into this space. Also on the ground here is the second part of our hardscaping which is 3 4 inch chip seal aka pea gravel and this is in the color California gold. Having some unfinished stone work into our backyard space kind of makes it feel a little less like perfect if that makes sense. Down here we also have lighting and these lightings are on a timer so they go on in a specific time. Adding lighting to your landscaping is so key to make it feel luxurious and we also have some on our hill that lights up some of the trees so it's really nice to actually like when we're in our room we can see the hill it's nice to see it lit at night also back here these are fern pines they basically act as hedges for privacy the good thing about our community though is that each house is nestled on a slope so your windows when you're looking out don't see onto the neighbor's yard so these aren't really for privacy because the neighbors can't see into our yards and we can't see into theirs but they are able to add greenery and hide the fencing behind here and just you know give it a little bit more of a luscious vibe back here the third material we're using in the foundation of the backyard space is turf originally i was against turf I didn't want it I told the designer no turf he put it in anyways because I think he knew best and I'm glad he ended up putting it in because it does help soften the backyard space all right so with that said let's make our way over to the side yard over here to the left all right, so this side yard space is actually really, really big for being a side yard. Over here to the side, we just have more ornamental grass as well as the fern pines. But yeah, nothing really much going on here. If you guys have any ideas of what we can use this space for, please let me know down in the comments. We feel like the space is wasted. We do have these planters back here that we put in. We just haven't got to it yet. Over here, I highly recommend doing this if you have an AC unit in your backyard, but we built this fence here so that it hides the AC unit behind there. But yeah, if you guys have any ideas, let me know. All right, before we head over and talk about the middle section of this backyard space, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to today's sponsor, Animaka. Thank you to Animaka for sponsoring this video. If you guys are like us and love to be outdoors, love camping, and love the hammock experience, I highly recommend checking out this hammock by Animaka. It's portable, it's lightweight, but most of all, it sets up in seconds. The thing about camping, which especially in SoCal, is when you bring your hammock, sometimes you don't have a place to hang it. Trees are sometimes few and far between in campsites. My husband Donnie actually saw this company on Instagram and was like, oh my gosh, we have to get one. So I reached out to Animaka and I'm so happy that they were willing to collaborate with me on this video because I truly love this hammock. Like I said, it sets up in seconds and it's so portable that you could just take it anywhere with you, whether you're going out to a picnic, a beach, going on a camping trip, or like what we do all the time is we just set this up back here in our backyard. We're listening to the trickle of water, we're reading a book, watching YouTube. We just love this thing so much and it's so easy to put together and take apart that it doesn't feel like a chore and so that's why we use it often. It's so portable too that you can position it wherever you are, whether you want sun, whether you want shade and it's just perfect for getting some relaxation in which I think is really important. There are also two modes to this hammock. This one is the lounge mode where obviously you can lounge around all day and then there's also a chair mode where these come up a little more and so you can sit in it like a chair so it's super versatile. Guys I'm telling you oh so comfortable. I feel like a cocoon in here and I could just take a nap, read a book, watch a YouTube video, catch up on a Netflix binge, imagine going to the beach and just plopping down for the day. Yeah, I feel so sturdy on here and I love it so much that we want to get a second one and that's probably going to happen if I'm being honest with you because even though this could hold up to 550 pounds, me and Donnie have both been up here. We also put the girls on here together. It's just, I feel like I want my own hammock so I think I'm going to invest in a second one. These also come in different colors. We got the yellow and also because it is so small and portable, this could fit in the trunk of your car. You can honestly take this hammock anywhere. If you want to go to the beach, you want to go on a picnic, you want to go on a camping trip, even if you want to just take it in your backyard. 
hard. Like, look, I'm just chilling back here. It took seconds to set up, so it's not one of those things where it's gonna feel like we find ourselves oftentimes, even just during the weekday. Donnie has a long day at work. He comes back here. He can just decompress since he's been in the hospital all day, so... This has been amazing in our lives and I really highly recommend it. So yeah, thank you again Animaka for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna leave a link for this down below. It is an affiliate link, so if you do purchase it, you're supporting the channel with a small commission coming to me. So again, thank you so much Animaka for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the tour. Okay, so now let's continue to the tour. We are in the middle of our backyard space. Again, like I talked about earlier, this is the second olive tree right here, which will eventually mature into a beautiful olive tree and provide shade for our gathering area. So that's the goal here. But also I just love how this looks against the white stucco. Over here to the right, pretty much very simple. We just have two euphorbias right here that helps anchor the window in the middle. And then we just have these bushes on the side. These are called miniature olives, which help tie in the olive tree over to this side. Also back here is this grass area. This is where the girls play. This is where we put out a blanket. We'll picnic down here. We also did a backyard camping moment back here, which I am thinking of making that an annual event with my friends. And so all of our tents were back here. So that was really fun. That's the middle section of the backyard. So let's make our way over here. You know what? I'm saying right, left, middle, but depending on where you're looking at it, that's left, this is right, that's right, this is left. So apologies if I'm mixing up my directions, but let's make our way over to the last section of our backyard space, which is what we call sort of like the lounge area. Forgot, I gotta take you guys with me. <laughs> so let's go. I will actually take you guys over this side. All right, so this is what we like to call the lounge area. The main feature in this lounge area is obviously this freestanding water feature. I just love this. I knew because we didn't have a budget for a pool, which I wish we did. <laughs> I knew that we wanted some sort of water element here and we definitely wanted to hear the splashing of the water. Because our primary bedroom is parallel to this area, if our door is open, we can hear this and it just feels so nice. And so I am so glad we decided to do this. Also back here, we have four steel posts and these hold the market lights to our house that string and attached to our main house. This again gives all the vibes at night. Again, it is bright, but not too bright. It has that really soft glow, which we just really love. And I just feel like it's so nice back here just to sit and relax and hang out, especially during those cool summers when you're just back here. Oh, so good. As for the furniture pieces back here, this is from a company called Neighbor Outdoor. This is their sofa, which is in this beautiful teak. These cushions are actually water resistant and they could stand up to all weather year round. We do have a cover for this, which I think really has helped maintain how this looks. But I do love these cushions because if it does get wet, the cushions have some sort of technology where the water just seeps through and it will fully dry, which means it won't get moldy, which is nice. These chairs, though they look wood, are actually made from plastic. Over here, we have a cement table from CB2. And over over here we just have some stools from I believe we got these at Target we just saw them randomly all right and let's make our way to the second side yard so this side yard is a tiny bit more functional because we do have our trash cans all the way there where we store and then we have citrus trees that line up this whole side over here so eventually you know we're gonna be able to pick some fruit we have some lemons right here over here to the right we just have some snake plants that they planted to sort of break up the gravel into the exterior of the house so kind of just help soften this up okay so with that said we're gonna head over to the last part of our tour for the backyard and that's gonna be our hill so originally we were actually going to have some steps over here that you can walk up into the hill and then in the middle of the hill we were going to put a bench and we were doing it in a way where you wouldn't intrude in our neighbors homes so that we could maintain a sense of privacy because when you're up in the middle of the hill you still can't see into the homes of our neighbors so that was the whole plan like imagine this going up here maybe to about that rock over there putting a bench and the cool thing is you have a view of the mountains over here and it's just so pretty especially when the sun is rising oh so beautiful the sun actually sets behind us and even with the sunset looking that way you get this really beautiful tone so that's something we might do in the future actually we'll go over here all right I honestly love coming back here because you literally can see a beautiful sort of view of your backyard space. I'll get into it later because one of the things we did reduce was the landscaping. This was supposed to be double the amount of plants back here. And at first, when things were planted, it looked so sparse. But now that they've grown in, I can't imagine it being double this. I'm glad we ended up needing to save money because I think this is the perfect amount of plants up here. So yeah, anyways, we have here a bunch of drought tolerant things. We have agave, these octopus agave that I just absolutely am in love with. I wasn't too thrilled about them because the agaves that we wanted at the time were sold out everywhere and so we ended up with these but I think they've grown in quite beautifully. We also have over here to the left a Palo Verde tree which has not grown but I know they're doing okay because they do flower and so 
I'm wondering if they're just taking a really long time to settle in. Over to the left of me is some bougainvillea. We really wanted this back here because it's one of the things that really add color up here. Behind me, we have again the fern pines. So eventually these will grow taller. This is for privacy reasons because over above us, there's a couple businesses. If you're on the other side of the fence, you can actually look into our backyard. So I'm hoping these grow so that we get more privacy from that side of the fence. We also have just a, a bit of boulders throughout and then also the lighting that I talked about earlier we have it on the palo verde trees as well as these trees back here this tree over here this guy right here is something we planted on our own and it's a miniature eucalyptus tree and then finally we just have some again ornamental grass to soften up the space over here and a little bit of ground cover all right guys that concludes the end of our backyard tour now let's go inside and talk about the whole process the construction and go over the cost breakdown of everything you saw back here Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that backyard tour. Honestly, it was so hot back there. And if you've been following my vlogs, I've been complaining for the last three weeks how gloomy it is in San Diego and how I can't film. But now the sun is out, sun is sunning, and I'm over there sweating, but we got it done and I hope you guys enjoyed that. For the third part of the video, we're gonna go ahead and dive in and talk about the cost. I have the estimate right here about this whole project as well as just uh, kind of dive deeper into the design and working with a designer and also just any advice and tips that I have that I could share with you in case that you're going through something similar or thinking about hiring a designer or thinking about doing a makeover for your backyard. The reason why I wanna share this information with you guys is because back in 2021, when I was looking up costs, there was really nothing on the internet. I was like Googling, how much can 50,000 get you for your backyard space? How much can 100,000 get you for your backyard space? I even looked on YouTube and there wasn't a lot of information and so I'm hoping this can be helpful. I'm also gonna go line by line of what each thing costs. That way you can have a reference so that if you're out there getting bids, you can have something to compare with because I feel like that would have been really useful for me. So for us, the only sort of comps that we had since we couldn't really find much information online was getting a various amount of bids and then seeing where they were pricing things. And so that's one thing I first off would recommend is don't go with your first bid, get at least four or five and that way you can kind of narrow it down based on their work their price and then see what fits your budget. Also, if you're working with a designer, he or she will probably have trusted contractors too, so make sure to get bids from them. So with that said, we did work with a landscape architect and designer, his name is Max Vader, and his company is called Max Vader Land and Design. I'll leave his links down below, so make sure to check it out. Also, if you are in the SoCal area and you decide to get in touch with him, let him know that Mikey sent you and that I said hi. The contractor we ended up using was West Coast Concrete Company, which was again, a trusted contractor from our designer. The owner of that company is Micah. I'll leave his link down below. Let him know I sent you as well. Okay, so first let's talk about the actual process of working with a designer. I highly recommend the 3D model images if you are as anal as me when it comes to design. I wanted to make sure I knew exactly how it would look because I have a background in design and I can tell when something is a pixel off and so I just knew I had to have that visual reference point and I really recommend that. And the last thing I will say about using a designer is I recommend it so much also because if they're drawing out the plans for you, they're coming and measuring everything and they're gonna do a whole basically site map of your yard. You have all those measurements, you have all the material list, plant list, you have everything you need to just email that to contractors and ask for bids and you're gonna save so much time because they don't need to come out here and measure and survey everything. They can pretty much just give you an estimate by the plans that you get from your designer. All right, so here is the actual design. So look how huge this is, this is amazing. He like literally had a whole presentation and everything. This was sort of my biggest inspiration photo that I wanted, you know, having that fireplace be the focal point. So this is sort of where the jumpstart of our design process came from. And then you see all there, a master list of all the items and materials and measurements. Here is the blueprint design. And so as long as you have this, you could literally send it and get bids from different contractors. And also this was really useful for me that when the construction process was going on, I had this to look into and I was like making sure everything was in the right space. There was one point where the guys put in the footings for some of the concrete walking pads and it was off by a foot and I noticed it. At the end of the day, I would go back there. I was like my own project manager. I would go back there and make sure everything looked right. And basically it was a foot off and I was like, this ain't right. So I called them. Luckily, the next day was pouring day. So they canceled the pour day, they came and fixed it. So it only added an extra day. But imagine if they poured and how much time that would have been. 
whew, disaster. So again, having plants can save you a lot of money and time in the long run. He also included some photos of all the plants that he was gonna use. That way we can actually see how they look. And this was really useful in us looking them up so we knew how to take care of them. Okay, so basically that was step one of working with the designer and him coming up with the plans. Then we met and then from there, we went and sent this bid out to different contractors. His trusted contractor came back and the price was astronomical. So we were like, wait a minute, this is way over our budget. Speaking of budgets, can I just say, as someone who had zero experience with remodeling a backyard or working with a construction company, we thought like, oh, okay, maybe 60 to 80,000 would get us our, our dream backyard. Uh, no, we had a rude awakening after this first estimate. So basically with this plan, the bids were coming out to 260 to $320,000. I'm like, let's just move. <laughs> let's just sell the house and move at this point. And so then we thought about phasing it out, but we were like, okay, no, that's even gonna cost more because every time you start and stop construction, you're getting a new team in, that's just gonna end up costing more. And so we went back to the drawing board and thankfully this was a blessing in disguise because the original plan just had way more than we wanted to or way more than we bargained. And so we went back to the drawing board and literally cut out a lot of the different materials we were using and then just stuck to the concrete, turf and gravel. That's it. We also minimized the plant list by about over 50%. So what you see in the backyard is about less than half of what it was supposed to be. Again, a blessing in disguise. We also took out a few features like that walkway path to a little bench deck or seating up on the hill. We also admitted doing the built-in grill or little kitchen area. We took that out of the plants to save some money. Other cost saving things we did to bring down the cost is the fireplace. Instead of doing a natural gas line, we ended up using propane. So that saved on time for getting permits, but also the cost to run a natural gas line to there. Another big ticket item that we did take out was the deck. So originally where the gathering area is, that was supposed to be a raised cedar deck that was costing so much money so we just said forget that and I'm glad we ended up with just concrete because I just love the overall look anyways so that was also another blessing in disguise so yeah I guess my main tip for that is when you do get your design really look at it really figure out what you want and don't want and really think about if over time you might have a change in mind of style maybe just keep it more minimal and then just add all those other elements in accessories and furniture okay and so with all those things in mind and everything we axed out of the original plans the grand total for this is also just a few things to keep in mind is one this also covers some of our front yard everything on here is just based on square footage and so i can't really calculate what went on in the front but i would say that the front yard probably cost about 10 to 15 K out of this budget. So just keep that in mind. A second thing to keep in mind is that this was at the tail end of the pandemic in 2021. And so back then materials were costing a little bit more. And of course, a big thing is labor was much more expensive back then because of the shortage of people working. So just keep that in mind. The grand total for this project is from mind you 260 to around 320. We got it down to about a hundred $33,000. It is a lot of money and you know our original budget was 60 to 80 so if it was 60 it was not even half of this which still blows my mind to this day but now that I have a little bit more information about what things cost then I'm starting to understand all of that and before we dive into the actual cost of every feature I just want to say too is that we didn't want to blow our savings so we actually went with a loan so we actually paid about, I want to say, close to half of this in cash and then the rest we financed, which if you're looking to finance home improvements, I highly recommend a company called Lightstream. I'm not sponsored by them, but I did find that they had the best rates for home improvement loans. Okay, I was just going over this just to make sure I had all my notes ready. And there is one section here that we ended up adding after the fact, which cost $4,890. So I'm including that in the final price. So it comes out to about $138,000 now instead of the $133 I said earlier. So just FYI. Okay, so with that said, let's get into the meat and bones of what everything costs. Hi, editing Mikey here. And honestly, I was editing this video and at the end of the video, I was basically just going line by line for this and telling you guys the cost of it. And I was really bored editing it. So I figured, you know what? You guys don't really want to sit through five minutes of me just reading this paperwork. So instead, I'm going to list this estimate down below in the description box. That way you can reference it, especially if you're trying to get comps based on maybe some of these things. So yeah, this information here is going to be listed down in the description below. Also, while I have you here, just want to give another thank you to Enemaka for sponsoring this video. 
So hopefully that information was useful. Also, one important thing I forgot to mention is that this was an estimate and they stuck to the estimate 100%. There was no change in anything. There was no increased added cost. I was genuinely and happily surprised by that because every time you do a major project and you have an estimate or a budget, it tends to go over. It's just how it is, but in some way, shape or form, we stayed exactly on budget and I couldn't have been more happier. So that was awesome. All right guys, that's gonna be it for this video and I hope you found it informative, especially if you're going through the process or thinking about going through the process of making over your backyard, designing it or remodeling it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you happen to be here because you're searching for backyard tips and stuff, and if you like vlogs, make sure to check out my other videos. I do lifestyle vlogs. If that's sort of your thing, think about hitting the subscribe button and check out my other videos. Again, a link is down below for the interior tour of my house in case you're interested in that. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you can, try to choose happy over sad today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone.